The Bears take on the Panthers, 1 p.m. Eastern kickoff this Sunday. The Panthers are the three-point favorite at home. Totals 44 and a hook. We're 4-2 and two in our last six NFL tier package plays on Patreon.com slash Brock Page. We're also hitting at 67% for the entire 2020 season in our NFL tier membership on that website as well. For more information on how you can join in on the action, link for that site is in the description section below. And once again, that's Patreon.com slash Brock Page. Now the Bears are plus $1.20 for some money line cash in this one. And if you like them catching the three, they're minus a buck 18 to cover the point spread. Now the Bears did hold Tampa Bay to just 19 total points in their week five victory over the Bucks. Chicago is currently 4-1 on the season. And they're 1-0 in uh, division play. Defensively, well, they're allowing just 18 points a game. And they're averaging nearly three sacks per contest. Roquan Smith currently leading the club in tackles with 40 of them. He also has five and a half tackles for loss and a forced fumble. Akeem Hicks and Khalil Mack each have three and a half sacks on the season as well. Meanwhile, offensively, Chicago scored 50 total points in their last two victories. Allen Robinson's caught the ball 35 times for 421 yards and a couple of scores. And Jimmy Graham's also got four touchdown receptions on the season as well. They're taking on a Panthers team who's giving up about 24 points per contest defensively. And they've gotten to the quarterback just five times on the year. Really not a whole lot of pressure for this defensive-centric-minded uh, coach. Now, total-wise, two out of the Panthers' last three ball games stayed under the total of 44.5 points. Meanwhile, three out of Chicago's last four contests stayed under the 44.5 themselves. Give me the underdog Bears catching the points and the under 44.5 in that game. And before we go ahead and move on, just want to take another quick timeout. And welcome you to the video. Got some lines of personal leans out for NFL Week 6. But before we dive into some more free content right here on YouTube, I just want to quickly remind you once again that we are currently 4-2 and two in our last six NFL tier package plays on Patreon.com slash Brock Page. We're also hitting at 67% for the entire 2020 season in our NFL tier on that site as well. If you want some more information on how you can join in on the action, link for that site is in the description section below. And once again, that's patreon.com slash Brock Page. Now moving on, we're going to take a look at Cincinnati taking on the Colts, and that's going to be a 1 p.m. Eastern start time at Lucas Oil Stadium. The Colts are minus 7.5, totals 47. The Bengals are plus 280 for an upset win on the road. Joe Burrow's thrown for over 1,300 yards already through five games. Just three interceptions for the rookie QB. Tyler Boyd's been his favorite tar uh, target thus far. 32 catches and 362 yards and a score. He's also hit rookie uh, wide receiver T. Higgins 16 times for 214 yards and a couple of touchdowns since he scored 23 points or more in three out of their last four ball games. They're taking on an Indy squad who gave up just, uh, well, they just gave up 32 points to Cleveland in route to a nine-point loss. They were also 0-1 in divisional play, losing to Jacksonville during week one. Now, uh, Phillip Rivers has thrown four touchdowns, just four touchdowns through five games, along with five interceptions. Leading receiver T.Y. Hilton has yet to catch a receiving touchdown on the year as well. Got to imagine we'll see a whole lot of defense in this one. And as a matter of fact, just one out of Indy's five games on the season actually got over the total of 47 points. Meanwhile, two out of Cincy's last three contests stayed under that particular number themselves. So with all that said and done, give me the uh, underdog Cincinnati Bengals catching the points in the under 47. Next game, Detroit, Jacksonville, 1 p.m. East. The Lions are the three-point favorite on the road. Totals 54 and a hook. The Jags are plus a buck 60 for an outright win at home. Now, Jacksonville's been pretty sticking bad as of late. Four-game losing streak. 32 points per game they're giving up defensively. They're actually coming fresh off a loss to the previously winless Houston Texans, who literally just fired their head coach. Uh, they were dominated in that one by the final of 30-14. to 14. This Jags defense has gotten to the quarterback just five times all season, and they're forcing just one takeaway per game. And as good as the Jags' offense has been through the air in certain spots this year, 
They're rushing for less than 100 yards a game, really failing to establish a run game. And they have just one rushing touchdown on the season, so that could be problematic in short yardage situations. Now, Jacksonville's taking on a Lions team who's averaging 25 points a game. They've also uh, been a little more competitive than their counterparts. For the exception of their three-score loss against Green Bay, Detroit's prior two losses were blown leads where they were clearly in control for you know most portions of those contests. Now, Matt Stafford's throwing for over uh, 250 yards a game and eight touchdowns. Tight end TJ Hawkinson leads the uh, receiving core with 15 catches for a buck 80 and a couple of scores. Now, total wise, two out of the Lions' last three games did get over the total of 54 and a half points. A lot of points in their games. Meanwhile, two out of the Jags' last four contests got over that number themselves. Give me the Lions laying the field goal and the over 54 and a half in that game. All right, next contest Falcons, Vikings, 1 p.m. Eastern start time. The Vikings are minus three, totals 55. The Falcons are plus $1.60 for an upset win, but Atlanta's yet to win a ball game in five tries this season. They're giving up 32 points per contest. They're also losing by an average of eight points a game. They're taking on a Viking squad who's averaging 26 points a game offensively and 161 yards per game on the ground. Now, do keep an eye on running back Dalvin Cook, who's been uh, getting the majority of those rushing yards. He's actually uh, battling a groin injury that he uh, sustained in his last game against the Seahawks. Uh, Actually saw on TV when that injury occurred. But anyway, running back number two, that's Alex Madison. He's definitely been productive on his side of things as well, getting just half the touches. He is averaging five yards a carry, so hopefully they don't see too much of a uh, slump in that running game. And should the Vikings open up the passing game? Adam Thielen has caught 29 balls for 264 yards and six touchdowns through just five ball games. Now, three out of Minnesota's last four games did stay under the total of 55 points. Meanwhile, Atlanta's last two ball games stayed under the number themselves. Give me the Vikings laying the field goal and the under 55 in that contest. All right, next game, Broncos Patriots, 1 p.m. East. The Patriots are the seven point faves, totals 54 and a half. The Broncos are plus 320 for an upset win on the road. Now, the Broncos have given up 26 points or more in their last three straight ball games. They're just one and three overall for the season. This crew of Denver quarterbacks have a combined completion percentage of just 59%, and they collectively have been sacked 13 times. This Denver quarterback trio has also thrown six uh, interceptions collectively, and this Bronco rushing attack is also gaining less than 93 yards a game on the ground, and they have just three rushing touchdowns through four games. Now they're taking on a Patriots team who's going to be Well, rested after a bye week, uh, an off week. The defense has eight takeaways through four games. And linebacker Chase Winovich has two and a half sacks and four and a half tackles for loss on the year. Meanwhile, offensively, this Pats rushing attack has gained 180 yards per game on the ground and has rushed uh, for five touchdowns. Rex Burkhead's carried it 30 times for 4.3 yards per carry. And Cam Newton has rushed it in four times this season on the ground as well. Now, total-wise, two out of both teams' last three ball games, respectively, got over the total of 45.5 points. Give me the Patriots laying the touchdown and the over 45 and a hook in that game. All right, next contest that I have for you, it is going to be Washington taking on the Giants, 1 p.m. Eastern start time. The Giants are the three-point favorite, totals 43 juice to the under. The football team is plus $1.35 for a straight-up win. Now, Washington is losing by an average of 16 points per defeat. They also lost their last four straight, and they scored just 15 points a game in those losses. This Washington offense is averaging just 210 yards a game through the air, and they've thrown for just four touchdowns all season. Of course, uh, uh, Dwayne Haskins was benched last week. Who knows if we'll see him on the roster this week. But anyway, uh, the football team's rushing for just 81 yards per contest as well. They're taking on a Giants team who, despite their terrible you know, record, they've been competitive for most part, uh, for the most part in over half of their games. And as a matter of fact, three of their losses were de- you know, decided by just one score. Darius Slayton has caught 23 balls for 365 yards in two scores. 
And believe it or not, this giant defense has forced six takeaways and has sacked the quarterback a dozen times already. Now, total-wise, two out of New York's last three ball games got over the total of 43 points. Meanwhile, the football team saw four out of their last five get over that number themselves. Give me the Giants laying the field goal and the over 43 in that game. Next and final matchup for the show. It is going to be Ravens-Eagles, 1 p.m. East. The Ravens are the seven-point favorite. Uh, totals 46. The Eagles are plus 280 for an outright win at home. The Eagles are winless in two tries at Lincoln Financial Field. Just one three and one overall for the season. And that lone tie was against the rookie-led Cincinnati Bengals. Philadelphia is giving up 29 points per contest. And they forced just two interceptions through five games on the defensive side. Now, Carson Wentz has also thrown nine interceptions on the year, and he's been sacked 19 times. He's also completing just 60% of his passes. The Eagles are losing by an average of 12.3 points per contest in their defeats. The Ravens on the other side are on a two-game winning streak, four and one straight up overall for the season. They're also 2-0 straight up in divisional play. Baltimore is coming fresh off a 27-3 dismantling of Cincinnati in Week 5. They're also winning by an average of 22 points per contest in their four victories. Lamar Jackson's thrown nine touchdowns and just two interceptions. He's also been averaging nearly six yards a carry when he runs. One of his favorite targets is tight end Mark Andrews, who's caught 18 balls for 222 yards and five touchdowns. This Baltimore D has also given up uh, 17 points or less in all four of their victories. They're giving up just 12 points per contest. For the entire season, giving up just a dozen a game all year. Now, this Baltimore D-line's gotten to the quarterback 16 times already for an average of 3.2 sacks per contest. Rookie Patrick Queen has been uh, an absolute beast as well. 42 total tackles, two sacks, five tackles for loss, and two fumble recoveries. One of those was a scoop and score for a touchdown. Now, three out of Baltimore's last four ball games got over the total of 46 points. Just one out of Philly's last four. Uh, uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Uh, but it does look like a potential spot for an overplay. Uh, give me the Baltimore Ravens minus seven in the over 46 in that game. And with that said, guys, that's going to do it for me for part one. Be on the lookout for part two uh, coming out either today or tomorrow sometime later in the week. But uh, anyway, guys, got to thank you for joining me right here on YouTube. Um, don't forget to check me out on Patreon. If you guys decide to get a package today on Patreon, just keep in mind, we'll bill you the day you sign up and then the first of every month following that. But most importantly, guys, got to thank you for joining me right here on YouTube. Really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. And with that said, happy uh, Tuesday to you. Best of luck to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my website at patreon.com slash brockpage.